Hello and welcome to part 10 of our Azure Solutions Architect Expert exam practice question series. We are starting with question number 69. You are designing a point of sale solution that will be deployed across multiple locations and will use an Azure Databricks workspace in the standard tier. The solution will include multiple apps deployed to the on-premise network of each location. You need to configure the authentication method that will be used by the app to access the workspace. The solution must minimize the administrative effort associated with the staff turnover and credential management. What should you configure? Your options are a managed identity, a service principle, a personal access token. Folks, the keyword to answer this question is that multiple apps of the solution are deployed to the on-premise network. So you cannot use managed identity. This leaves us with service principle and personal access token, which both can fulfill the job. However, we need to minimize the administrative effort associated with staff turnover and personal access token will introduce overhead as they are bound to a particular staff. So we can rule out that as well. This leaves us with the correct choice service principle, which is an identity created for use with applications, hosted services, and automated tools to access Azure resources. The access is restricted by the roles assigned to the service principle, giving you control over which resources can be accessed and at what level. Next question. Your company has the divisions shown in the following table. Basically, there are two divisions with the name of East and West. Now, East division is hosted in the Azure subscription named sub one, and it has an intra tenant associated with it with name of contoso.com. Then the second division named as West is using the subscription as sub two and is associated with intra tenant as fabricum.com. Sub1 contains an Azure app service web app named App1. App1 uses Intra ID for single tenant user authentication. Users from Contoso.com can authenticate to App1. You need to recommend a solution to enable users in the Fabricam.com tenant to authenticate to App1. What should you recommend? Your options are configure a conditional access policy, Use Entra ID entitlement management to govern external users. Configure the Entra ID provisioning service. Configure Entra ID identity protection. Folks, you should make use of Entra ID entitlement management to govern external users. This feature allows you to manage access for external users, including those from different Entra ID tenants. You can invite users from Fabricam.com to access App1, which effectively enables cross-tenant authentication. Question number 71. Your company has offices in New York City, Sydney, Paris, Johannesburg. The company has an Azure subscription. You plan to deploy a new Azure networking solution that meets the following requirements. Connects to express route circuits in the Azure regions of East US, Southeast Asia, North Europe, and South Africa. Minimizes latency by supporting connection in three regions. Supports site-to-site -site VPN connections. Minimizes costs. You need to identify the minimum number of Azure Virtual WAN hubs that you must deploy and which Virtual WAN SKU to use. What should you identify? The first part of the question is talking about number of Virtual WAN hubs and your options are one, two, three, and four. Folks, you should deploy three Azure Virtual WAN hubs. Each virtual WAN hub can connect to an express route circuit. So having hubs in strategic locations allows you to utilize this feature effectively. By deploying hubs in three different regions, you can provide optimal routing and minimize latency for connections from the offices in New York City, Sydney, and Paris, which is one of the requirement. Now, the next part of the question is talking about virtual WAN SKU, and the options are basic or standard. And folks, basic SKU doesn't support express route. So you have to choose a standard SKU in this case. There is a link on your screen. I would highly recommend you to go through the link to understand more about virtual vans. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी टू यू नीड टू डिजाइन अ हाईली अवेलेबल एजर सीक्वल डेटा बेस दैट मीट्स दॉलोइंग रिक्वायरमेंट फेल ओवर बिटवीन रेप्लीकाज ऑफ द डेटा बेस मस्ट अकर विदाउट एनी डेटा लॉस द डेटा बेस मस्ट रिमेन अवेलेबल इन द इवेंट ऑफ ए जोन आउटेज कॉस्ट मस्ट बी मिनिमाइज विच डिप्लॉयमेंट ऑप्शन शुड यू यूज Your options are Azure SQL Database Hyperscale, Azure SQL Database Premium, Azure SQL Database Basic, Azure SQL Database Serverless. Folks, Azure SQL Database Premium is the recommended option as it offers advanced features like active geo replication and automatic data loss free failover. It also supports high availability in case of zone outages, ensuring the database remains accessible even if a specific zone experiences an interruption. Next question, friends. You are developing a multi-tier app named App One that will be hosted on Azure virtual machines. The peak utilization periods for App One will be from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. You need to deploy the infrastructure for App One. The solution must meet the following requirements: support virtual machines deployed to four availability zones across two Azure regions. Minimize cost by accumulating CPU credits during periods of low utilization. What is the minimum number of virtual networks you should deploy, and which virtual machine size should you use? And the first part of the question is talking about number of virtual networks. And your options are one, two, three, and four. Folks, you need at least one virtual network per Azure region for the resources. Since you have two Azure regions in the question, you will need at least two virtual networks. Now, the next part of the question is talking about virtual machine size. And your options are A series, B series, D series, and M series. The B series VM size is the best choice here because of the ability to bank CPU credits during periods of low utilization. The B series are burstable VMs that accumulate CPU credits during idle times and then consume these credits during periods of high CPU usage. Question number seventy-four. You have an on-premise Microsoft SQL Server named SQL One that hosts fifty databases. You plan to migrate SQL One to a Azure SQL Managed instance. You need to perform an offline migration of SQL One. The solution must minimize administrative effort. What should you include in the solution? Your options are Azure Migrate, Azure Database Migration Service, SQL Server Migration Assistant. Data migration assistant. Now, folks, for an offline migration of an on-premise SQL Server to Azure SQL Managed instance, the best choice is to include Azure Database Migration Service in the solution. Azure Database Migration Service is a fully managed service designed to enable seamless migrations from multiple database sources to Azure data platforms with minimal downtime by allowing online migration, but it also supports offline migrations. Now let's understand what is the use case of other services being talked about here. Azure Migrate provides a broader set of migration capabilities for various workloads, but is not specifically tailored for SQL database migrations. SQL Server Migration Assistant is primarily for migrating SQL Server databases to newer SQL Server versions or Azure SQL databases, but it's less suited for large-scale offline migrations compared to DMS, which is Database Migration Service. Now, data migration assistant is useful for assessing SQL Server databases and identifying compatibility issues, but does not handle the actual migration process itself. So, folks, I hope you now understand the use case of all the four Azure services being talked about in the question. But if you still have any doubts, please post them in the comment section. Let's look at question number seventy-five. You plan to deploy an infrastructure solution that will contain the following configurations. External users will access the infrastructure by using Azure front door. External user access to the backend APIs hosted in Azure Kubernetes service will be controlled by using Azure API management. 
External users will be authenticated by an enter ID B2C tenant that uses open ID connect based federation with a third party identity provider. Which function does each service provide? Each function may be used once, more than once, or not at all. Now, there are three functions being mentioned here, and those are protection against open web application security project vulnerabilities, IP filtering on a per API level, validation of Azure B2C JSON web tokens, which is also called as JOT tokens, and the two services that are being talked about here are front door and API management. Now, folks, Azure front door provides web application firewall capabilities that protects against open web application security project vulnerabilities, such as SQL injection and cross-site scripting. This ensures that requests are filtered for malicious content before reaching backend services. Azure API management can validate JOTs issued by Enter ID B2C, API management can enforce authentication policies that check the token's validity and ensure it's issued by the trusted Enter ID B2C tenant, thereby enabling secure access to APIs. So folks, if you are liking the content, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel. Let's look at question number 76 of the series. Your on-premise data center contains a server that runs Linux and hosts a Java app named App1. App1 has the following characteristics. App1 is an interactive app that users access by using HTTPS connections. The number of connections to App1 changes significantly throughout the day. App1 runs multiple concurrent instances. App1 requires major changes to run in a container. You plan to migrate App1 to Azure. You need to recommend a compute solution for App1. The solution must meet the following requirements. The solution must run multiple instances of App1. The number of instances must be managed automatically depending on the load. Administrative effort must be minimized. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Azure Batch, Azure App Service, Azure Kubernetes Service, Azure Virtual Machine Scale Sets. Now, folks, the first thing you need to take into consideration is App1 requires major changes to run in a container and you need to minimize administrative efforts so you can safely rule out AKS. Now, Azure Batch does not support HTTPS-based user interactive applications directly, so we can rule that out as well. Now, App Service and Virtual Machine Scale Set, which is VMSS, both can be used to fulfill the requirement, but we need to minimize administrative efforts, so we will rule out Virtual Machine Scale Set, which is option D. Azure App Service is ideal for hosting web apps and APIs. It supports HTTPS connections, automatic scaling based on load and multiple instances, all while minimizing administrative overhead. So folks, I hope you now understand why I have chosen Azure App Service as the correct answer here. Next question. You have a Microsoft Entra tenant. You plan to deploy Azure Cosmos DB databases that will use the SQL API. You need to recommend a solution to provide a specific Entra ID user accounts with read access to the Cosmos DB databases. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are shared access signature, SAS, and conditional access policies, certificates and Azure Key Vault, master keys and Azure information protection policies, a resource token and an access control IAM role assignment. Folks, Azure Cosmos DB supports Azure AD based RBAC. You can assign roles through Azure's identity and access management for granular access control, including read only access to specific Cosmos DB resources. A resource token is issued by Azure Cosmos DB to grant restricted access to resources, making this a viable option when combined with IAM. Again, there is a link on your screen on how to use resource tokens with Azure Cosmos DB. Go through the link to understand this process in more detail. 
So friends, we now almost have 80 questions in our Azure Solutions Architect Expert exam practice question series. So if you are someone who is looking to gain PDF access to all the questions that we have covered in the series till now, then do not forget to take the gold membership of the channel and email me at devopsup2023 at gmail.com requesting the PDF copy. Question number 78. You have an Azure subscription. Your on-premise network contains a file server named Server1. Server1 stores 5 TB of company files that are accessed rarely. You plan to copy the files to Azure Storage. You need to implement a storage solution for the files that meets the following requirements. The files must be available within 24 hours of being requested. Storage costs must be minimized. Which two possible storage solutions achieve this goal? Your options are create an Azure blob storage account that is configured for the cool access tier, create a blob container, copy the files to the blob container and set each file to the archive access tier. Second option is create a general purpose v1 storage account, create a blob container and copy the files to the blob container. The third option is create a general purpose v2 storage account that is configured for the cool default access tier. Create a file share in the storage account and copy the files to the file share. Fourth option is create a general purpose v2 storage account that is configured for the hot default access tier. Create a blob container, copy the files to the blob container and set each file to the archive access tier. And the final option is create a general purpose v1 storage account. Create a file share in the storage account and copy the files to the file share. Now folks, option A allows for cost efficient storage with the cool and archive tier. The archive tier is designed for rarely accessed data and offers the lowest storage cost. Files in the archive tier may take several hours to retrieve, which is like up to 24 hours. So it seems to be a suitable choice for our requirement. Now option B includes general purpose v1 storage accounts which do not support access tiers like pool or archive. So it does not offer a way to minimize cost for rarely accessed data, therefore an incorrect choice. Third option includes general purpose v2 accounts which support access tiers that help reduce storage costs. However, Azure file shares do not support archive tiers. So you would only have access to the hot or cool tiers. While the cool tier offers cost savings, it's not as cost effective as the archive tier for infrequently accessed files. So we can exclude it for now and see if we have a better option. Option D includes using the archive access tier, which provides the lowest cost for rarely accessed data and retrieval can be completed within the 24 hour time frame. The default hot access tier would not impact costs if files are directly placed in the archive tier. So this is the second correct option. And we will rule out option E due to the same reason we used for ruling out option B. So folks, that's all for this part of the series. We will be back soon with more such questions. Till then, stay tuned and keep liking and commenting on our content so it reaches the wider audience.